Daily Dosers, my name is Steven Beyer. I work on the creative video team here at North Coast and I'm so excited to bring you today's Daily Dose as we close our series in our favorite Jesus stories. We're going to be looking at the Good Samaritan Day, so open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 starting at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, what's important to understand here is that Jesus is speaking to a scholar. And so he's asking him, you know, how do you read this law? How do you read these commandments? Because it was very popular at the time to rank the commandments in order of the importance to follow. Now, it was universally accepted that the number one commandment was love the Lord your God with all your heart. But the number two commandment was in hot debate. You had one camp led by a man named Hillel that said the number two commandment was love your neighbor as yourself. You had another camp led by a man named Shammai that said it is be holy as I am holy. And why this is important is how you rank the commandments determined how you lived your life. Because oftentimes the commandments would bump into each other and you had to decide what is more important to follow. So this man is saying, I follow Hillel and say, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? You see, there's a debate within the debate here. We figured out the first question, but now we have to ask, who is my neighbor? And now Jesus is asked a question over 300 times in the Gospels, and he only gives a straightforward answer three times. This is not one of those times. So let's see what he has to say. Jesus replied and said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. And by chance a certain priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. So this is oftentimes when we think, oh, here's the villains of the stories, the guys who don't know what to do. But there's a little bit more going on here. You see, as a priest and a Levite, they would be terrified of the thought of being unclean because it is actually written in Levitical law that they are to not ever touch a dead body. So when they see that this guy could be dead, they're actually doing the right thing by their understanding of the law by going to the other side of the road. So now, as we're going through this story, we're like, okay, well, where's the good part? Where's the hero of this? And as they're reading this or hearing this from Jesus, uh, they would be thinking, okay, where's the good Jew? But let's see how Jesus turns this story. He says, But a certain Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine in them, and put him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you will spend, when I return I will repay you. Now this is actually crazy to these guys that are listening. They despise the Samaritans, so this would be ridiculous to them that they would be the hero of the story. There was a time when Israel was split into two kingdoms, the north and the south, and the southern kingdom was put into exile, and those that remained in the north started intermarrying with the people that were around in the area. So when the southern kingdom came back, they saw all these intermixed people, and they looked at them like they were half-breeds. So to them, these Samaritans were an absolute abomination. They were not to be considered Jews. So for, did, for Jesus to use them as the hero of the story is just crazy. So it's so much so that even when Jesus at the end says, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell to the robbers, he can't even use the Samaritan's name. He says, well, I guess the one who showed mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, go and do the same. You see, I think there's a lot more to this story than just talking about how we're supposed to be kind to people. We're, we're not just to be, you know, Christian AAA. Like, it is important to treat others well, but it's more getting to the heart of who is your neighbor. Because we know that we're supposed to love God, and by loving God, we now know that we need to love our neighbor. And as this story shows us, loving our neighbor means loving our enemy. So who in your life do you need to bring into your camp? Who is someone that now needs to be considered a neighbor? Because it should radically shift the way that you think about treating those people. So that's my encouragement to you as you go out, is that you treat everyone that you come in contact with, whether it be a family member, a friend, or someone that is your enemy, that you love them with all your heart.